Hello and welcome to the Drum History Podcast. I'm your host, Bart Vanderzee, and today I am joined by Jeremy Berman and Max Cusor. Max and Jeremy, welcome to the podcast. Hey. Thanks, man. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, this is a really cool one. Um, so we're going to be talking about Q-Drum. We're going to be talking about Orange County. We're going to be talking about drum teching. We're going to be talking about uh, what's been going on with Jeremy and kind of give everyone an, uh, an update on that, which is some, some pretty heavy stuff. But um, I think... For starters, to jump in, guys, um, why don't we just go back to the early days? And uh, you both were builders at Orange County, which there's recently been uh, two Orange County episodes, so we won't go too heavy into like, more Orange they were, County. They, they were great; they were fantastic. No, they, I listened. Yeah, to they did a better they, job. They did a better job yeah. than you could have done. That's for sure. I appreciate that. And and yeah. but so that being said, Jeremy, you came up a lot, obviously, of doing some influential stuff, and then. Jeremy, you talk to me a lot about how much you are a fan of what Max has been doing. So yeah. um, let's just hop in here, man. And I don't know, Jeremy, talk about how you got involved with Orange County back in 99, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was, uh, I was working at Guitar Center. I was freshly learning how to play drums. I started late. I started in, when I was like 18. And um, while I was at Guitar Center in Fountain Valley, um john machado who is one of the founders of orange county drum would come into to the shop to buy drum heads and uh we just became buddies and um nam show of 1999 i believe was in los angeles and it wasn't in anaheim and i was working for guitar center um i had just flipped a vehicle over a freeway overpass Whoa. and I, and i and i survived i walked away Long story short, what do you want to do? I don't want to be a salesman. It sucked. It was the worst. It was the worst experience, but also the best experience taught me this is not what I want to be. So I bugged John for about a month and a half every time he would come in. Hey, you got a spot. He's like, you're going to make way less money and it's just menial labor. And I said, sweet, sign me up. So the first time I went down there to meet them, I, uh, uh, Spoke to John. I met the guys that were there, and it was maybe three people. It was uh, Josh Lamb, um, rest in peace, Robert Noyes, Robert Ortiz, um, who didn't technically work at Orange County Drum because he's a he's a bass tech for Blink One Eighty Two, but he uh, he was there, and he's kind of the one that brought me in, showed me the back, showed me all the stuff that they do, and uh, and I was sold from that moment on. And I literally spent the first seven months of my life at Orange County Drum sanding shells only. The insides of shells, back and forth. Mm -hmm. Three different grits, spin it, keep going. Inhaling that sawdust and I made <laughs> seven and a quarter an hour. Wow. <laughs> yeah, dude. I absolutely loved it. Um, yeah. And from there, you know, it was one of those things. It's just, you see the progression of everything happening and you just want to be involved. So I stuck my nose in everybody's job to figure out what the hell they were doing. And there you go. That, that, yeah, that's that, awesome. That's what started it for me. You know, I will say that I worked at Guitar Center as well in the drum department. And it was in Kentucky, <laughs> though. I'm in Cincinnati. Okay. So Kentucky's sure. really close. It was 525 an hour. Oops. And uh, all right. All it right. was just and that was that was like. <laughs> Dude, that was like everyone on three your employee number dude zero one nine five seven four i still got so it no um, memory of it I, zero I remember typing eight, to the green screen computer <laughs> zero one three five seven yeah man so we all we all have that in common we all work together yeah. Awesome. yeah i remember i called a columbus store trying to get like a price or like a discount on something after i quit and they were like well what's this store number and i said uh 614 and they were like that's the area code in columbus and i like i like hung up <laughs> so yeah. i was like i don't know what uh, i'm talking uh, about <laughs> panic. Yeah. yeah panic mode yeah, yeah, um, yeah. that's great yeah man that's what, that's G what center all right max tell us about your experience joining up with orange county and uh, what that was like for you so sim similar trajectory similar path i was a drummer i played drums i uh i right out of high school i got a job i was like i oh, you know i want to be like in the music industry um, not necessarily like as a face person, but just, I want to be a part of like the big machine, you know? So I got a job at guitar center and, uh, similarly, dude, it was garbage, like no offense to them, you know, but it was just like, 
there was no direction. It was aimless. It was very corporate. And uh, it was the first and only job I ever got fired from. Uh, I 100% self-sabotaged myself, just slept through an alarm like three days in a row, you know, and they let me go. And I was, oh, shit. It was great because it was like a rude awakening, you know, like I'd never gotten fired from a job before. But after that, I was like, well, what do you want to do? You know, I was like, I it was not good enough to like try to be, well, I'm going to be a career drummer, you know. But I was always working with my hands. I was always like tinkering and like building things. So I was like, well, obviously it was like logically, I was like, oh, I want to build drums. Uh, what's around me at the time? It was like DW or this co company, Orange County Drum. And I knew of Orange County Drum peripherally. I knew them because there were like bands that I had listened to at the time, you know, like Limp Bizkit and stuff that like played Orange County and I knew who they were and Deftones and stuff like that. And obviously uh, all the other big bands like, 311 and stuff um but i wasn't I, I wasn't like a super fanboy but i knew that they were dope and i knew that they were local and i was like well perfect like that's right up my alley i went and checked out their website i think at the time and then like just did a little bit of homework and i was like oh shit this company's like really cool uh and so i went and applied um gave the usual kind of you know like spiel i was like hey like i really want to work here like genuinely it was with john my interview was with john i don't remember much about like my walk-in or anything but my interview was with John and I gave the whole, you know, like I'll start sweeping the floors. I'll do whatever you want to do, whatever. And, uh, and, uh, yeah. And then he was like, Dude, yeah, cool. You could start. I believe I started, I think at eight bucks an hour, maybe, maybe oh. eight bucks an oh. hour. Upgrade. Oh. Maybe <laughs> like I, I might be embellishing now you this. Find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This might be, this might be my ego talking, but <laughs> I was, you know, and I got the job and I was like, Oh, this is gonna be so cool. Like I'm gonna be a drum builder. And then, you know, first day of work, show up, <laughs> wet behind the ears, excited and uh, very similar to Jeremy. And I, I, I really appreciated this about the shop back in the day. And then I, it is, it's still something that even in like my current line of work that like I still implement is it's like building your way up through the ranks, not just yep. like feeling a necessity. So for, for example, at Orange County, like my first job was polishing. We used to polish the badge screws. There were four oh badge God, screws I per badge and you would have that. to polish them with rouge and then buff them out on a wheel. And like, dude, first job, I go, Jeremy showed me, runs me through. It's like in the back of the shop and every once in a while, a badge would like catch on the buffing wheel and just Ding. like, dude, project out <laughs> just like across the room. And, uh, Dude, and then it was just like, nobody, th there was no real sense of direction. So it was like, Jeremy's like, oh, yeah, 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 do this. And then he went off and did whatever he had to do. And fast forward like two hours later, and he's just like, hey, you're, you're still polishing those? You know, my fingers are like black. My, yeah. my, my finger, the tips of my fingernails were glistening. They were so shiny, you know, and oh, then yeah. my skin was black. But, and then, yeah, it was, it was like, okay, cool. Well, let's get you standing shells and stuff like that. And then, you know, it was, it was very gratifying. And then it just kind of went from there, you know, yeah. and then building the yeah. relationships and stuff. That's hilarious. I totally forgot about the polishing of the screws. Yeah. At some point, somebody got the bright idea to polish the washer, the seal washers. Yeah. Remember uh, that shit? Uh, yeah. It was oh. a guy who, yeah. Um, <sighs> Whose idea was that, bro? Not me. Not me. <laughs> oh, it yours. You're right. You're right. You're right. No, I won't throw no. you under that bus. No. It wasn't yours. No, I, no, do no, no, no. Who, I do remember whose it was. But it wasn't yours. I apologize. My apologies, yeah. dude. I'm sorry. But I mean, that's yeah. attention to detail that like, yeah, it's monotonous. Dude, no, and, no, 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 no. That's, that's what Orange County. That, that's yeah. that's Attention that's to that detail is, is having all your drums the same color. That's insanity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a little yeah. overboard. But it, it, man, was, the, it was fun. Are you guys surprised of the huge cult following nowadays or does it make perfect sense to you? I, I definitely am. I, I, it slipped under the radar for me. I mean, you know, I, I love that place to death. I, uh, it was devastating to me when it closed down and there's, there's a bunch of stuff that I, I, I'm not, I can't talk about that happened towards the end that made it really hard. But, uh, I will say that, uh, that was some of the best times of my life. Hands down the, the camaraderie of the crew, even though we had some outliers that, you know, eventually got canned or whatever or left. Um, there was always there was it was always fun even though there was stress and i think the two people that got the most stress was max and myself because we were the direct contact with daniel and when daniel needed something he needed it yesterday and he needed it done to the utmost perfection and if anybody will sniff out a flaw it's that man he right 
he it's uncanny you have i and immediately did it it, yeah, immediate, and immediately first, first like thing before you see seeing the like, other side oh and you're just like i worked so hard on that how did you Saw see that, huh? that yeah yeah <laughs> you know uh, <laughs> but but he really made us like so nervous to build for him that it made us that much better and yeah, and again yeah. it was max right. and i because we were the mm-hmm. two that at the point that he could trust us to build all this stuff we were the ones that held all the keys to every aspect of building and that was that That's, that yeah that trust and that faith in from him was huge i think that, for me it was i don't know i'm not gonna yeah. speak for max but it was huge it was huge and it, it definitely resonated and left its mark on me so yeah well you, you daniel know. was always definitely the one you wanted you wanted that celebration from you wanted daniel yeah. to yeah, not in a groveling sense, like, but you wanted his his uh, his merit. You wanted his like, dude, good job. And you're just like, yeah, yeah, dude, good job. You know, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I did it. <laughs> yeah, because dude, because hey, for that reason, like, his bar was so high, and the, and and he Daniel also too. I don't know if if he gets enough credit for like being innovative and too. And so and John too, dude. Yeah. Like, give oh, those boy. guys. Those guys would oftentimes throw out ideas and whatever and. They were fantastic. And then we would run with them. We would be allowed to run with them and make them b- bigger or better or yeah. worse. But yep. they had some great ideas, man, that just would shoot off the cuff. And then they were always super cool with just being like, hey, dude, dude like, especially that was kind of like the best part when Daniel would say something you knew like when he's like, Hey, what if it's like, it's going to happen? Like, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 it's a green light. It's a green light. Hey, yeah. make this happen. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's fine if it costs money, make it happen. Yeah. And that yeah, was later like, on, John, fun. Yeah, later on, John wasn't so fond of that part right, because it was right. always like because Max and I would push so hard on yeah. certain things, and John's just like, "Dude, really?" Daniel yeah. said it was okay. Of course he did. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's like a personality type, and like everyone's had a job where like their boss is like they ride you, but when you get that little bit of like, like appreciation, it, you will like it more because they were kind of riding you so hard. Interesting thing about Orange County is like, I never felt a timeline pressure ever, like ever, ever, ever. What? And, uh, yeah, I, 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 it's funny. Like even, even my time at Q, like, you know, I spent six years at Q and something that I quietly pride myself on is like, dude, we never missed a deadline. Not once. Not once that I can think of we ever missed a deadline, or at least I never missed it, a it, deadline. Oh, you know, like, I, I, I most definitely have. I, I know. Yeah, <laughs> but like, uh, and even then, like, I, 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 it's a different pressure now. Like now, I do, uh, you know, I, I, I do a different job, and like, I feel the pressure of like, oh, I got to get this done in time, and like, I, like, I had to become forty to like feel that pressure. Like at at, at Orange <laughs> County, it was always the for me at least, it was the pressure of like have your peers approve of what you're doing and not yeah. in not in a sense where i needed their approval is in a to feel self validated or anything but it was like hell yeah like i knew this was cool and so yeah. do you like you know type thing and then also to to make daniel and john happy like when they were stoked it was like I did my job this feels cool yeah <laughs> like you know this episode is brought to you by sweetwater I just got a pair of Sennheiser HD 650 headphones from Sweetwater, and these things are awesome. The HD 650s are hi-fi headphones, which are great for mixing, new editing, and just really listening back to music is a really great experience in these. Um, I do editing for hours on end, uh, working on drum history, but also other stuff for work, and I'm usually always wearing headphones, and these are so much more comfortable. And it kind of feels like a little speaker next to your head that has a very kind of clean and natural sound as opposed to um, other traditional closed back headphones, which are just kind of pushed up against your ear and very tight and aren't great for long uh, runs wearing headphones. These are extremely lightweight headphones and very high quality on the build. And one thing I love is that they come with a 10 foot long detachable cable, which is always great for drummers because you always need a longer cable. So uh, very cool. I highly recommend these. Check out the Sennheiser HD 650 headphones by following the link in the description and you'll find the drum history gear page on Sweetwater where you can find the HD 650s and a bunch of other cool gear. So thanks to Sweetwater for sponsoring this episode. 
it's a certain way to get stuff done. I mean, it, Orange County seems like a boot camp kind of like where you guys like got you worked hard, but it trained you to be master drum builders. I mean, really, you guys learned a lot. You got heavy duty, real deal experience there. There was a, one of the cool things about it is that there were so many different stations and there was only a handful of guys. You if you showed if you if you if you showed that you had what it takes to move on to another uh, another step then we would show you how to do that or they would show us how to do yeah. it and if you hmm. didn't show the aptitude for it you you were stuck you were just standing shells my man you were just standing shells or you were cutting out cutting vent holes and sanding vent holes it's I know Corey mentioned the vent holes and stuff. And, you know, it's funny because when I started, vent holes were shaped. By the end of it, vent holes weren't shaped anymore. And Mm -hmm. when I say shaped, hand filed so they had a curvature, not a flat hole, you know. Um, And it really took skill of hand tools to really figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I think with that, that if you didn't have that, you didn't you didn't excel at snare bedding. You didn't move on to the other stuff yeah. of like cleaning seams and doing all this stuff. And, you know, there's only, there's only a handful of people that really like understood each and every aspect. And what would happen is you would be stuck on that job for six months to a year. I built, I built shells every day for what, six seven months at one time it, all the 20 yeah. ply 30 ply 40 ply 50 ply you were all in the that hollow corner. body shells i was in that i had my station yeah, yeah. that was my sta- I had my, I, I, had my, I had my disc man my headphones and i <laughs> yeah. just and i had my little press and i just that's all i did yeah. 70 shells in one day was my record yeah. wow yeah that's insane that was when we were doing pad yeah but yeah. but like he's got the thumbs to show it dude <laughs> yeah that those are th- those are oh, shell building, those are shell building thumbs dude <laughs> Ma- Ma- Max did it. Max did it on the wrapping station, which yeah. also was the staining station, yeah. which is also the spraying station. All those were combined. Um, the edging, really only Max, myself, and John edged. Yeah, yeah. It, for it, the it, most part, it, well, uh, there's also the fact that like edging was dangerous, so there was <laughs> there had to be a, a a want to do it, right? Like yeah. when you edged yeah. the twenty ply, it was. It, it, it was different than like ever using like a router table or anything. But when you did like a 40 ply, dude, it was sketch. When you, when like you, 100%. When you, when you heard that big thump on the wall. Yeah. When you hear that, you know, there's like, there's a rhythm. We had a router room and there was a rhythm and you would hear meow, meow, meow. And then you'd hear what? Boom. And everybody <laughs> froze because they knew what that meant. Dude, that meant the router threw that drum across the room and ripped it out of your hands. Jeez. And, dude, it was terrifying. Wow. So yeah, yeah, you had to want to be like, all right, dude, I'll tame this beast, you know, or whatever. But yeah. And then you just kind of cool, though. There's like yeah, there's like yeah. there's levels you achieve, you know. Yeah, there, well, and then, there was and definitely then, some competition too between Max yeah, who and could, I. Who could throw a who could router throw a snare drum the furthest? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was like a big part mm-hmm. of it really was like you had to show want to do it for one. And then yeah. two, like we did teach a lot of people, we would run them through courses and like we, we, all of our snare beds at Orange County were like hand filed. And, and to this day, like to this day, I can spot my snare beds from Jeremy's snare beds without question, like 100%. a signature, hmm. you know, like yeah. the profile of the snare bed is the same, but there's like a touch. And then there's a way that each of us do them. That's different. Much like how, you know, a Mason cuts a stone or something like you could see the chisel marks and it's very similar in, in a snare bed. And so we would, we would teach people how to do a snare bed. And it's, it's weird. It's like the first one always goes actually pretty well. Cause like you're being hovered yeah. and like, you're very attentive, but then it all just degrades. And then it's like, how fast wow. can you recover from that degradation? <laughs> and, yeah. oh my God. you know, and we would try and like, Hey man, you, you would have an opportunity. And then if you showed repeatedly that like, dude, you're just not grasping the task. Then unfortunately, it was like we would very nicely ask you to go do something else. You yeah. know, yeah. and we would we would do it on scraps first, of course. Yeah. We wouldn't do it on. But yeah. uh, one of my favorites uh, in that story would be our our buddy Dave Good. Yeah, um, dude. dude that, I mean, that, <laughs> love you, Dave. The sweetest Dave, human I've ever met. Dave is one of the most incredible drummers I've ever seen play in my life. 
And uh, he ended up just becoming like the whole guy. He was the vent guy. Yeah. He did all the vents. But at one point, he was like, he was out of me. He's like, I really want to learn how to snare better. Okay. So I taught him first. I think Max taught him again. But in that time frame, one of my favorite things is like, I showed him how to do it and he was doing it. And I'm like, cool. Okay. I'm going to go over here and do my job. You practice the second, the second bed. I come back and we, the way our snare beds are, they're flat with a couple little ramps, you know, helps accommodate 42 strand all the way down to 10 strand. And mm -hmm. it makes it easier to control the uh, tuning of the bottom head to, um, dampen or or make a little more sizzly the yeah. snare wires by adjusting the tension on the head it's kind of it's a cool thing daniel taught me yeah. how to do it it's and huge, i've dude. used it i've used it ever since and i will never change my snare bed because of that and when i when i tune drums it's so easy just to just a little half nudge loose will just dampen that snare wire so well so that it's yeah. perfect right our, our snare so, beds are secret weapons dude they are. They're, they're, awesome. they're, 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 just, they're, they're just awesome. So cutting those ramps is really like first you cut the, fr the flatness, then you cut the ramps. And while you're filing it, you're making it nice and smooth. But what he did is he started, he's like, I don't like it. So he kept trailing it off. And so the ramp ended up being like this long around the drum on one side. On the other side, it was only yeah. this big, which is what it should oh, be. Wow. Yeah. And, I, yeah. and he's like, I don't know what happened. I think I just got killed. <laughs> Dude. So, th so the biggest, the biggest problem is like, you would always have your dominant side because if you were right-handed or left-handed, if you were right-handed, typically the right side. So imagine if you will, like a driveway curb, you know, that's pretty yeah. much yeah, yeah. very that, similar to the profile of our, of our snare bed. So when you're, when you're, when you're filing the right side, you're very comfortable. You're in your element. But when you go to the left side, your vision's a little obscured. Sure. And then you end up this cycle where you're in essence chasing your tail. Where you're like, yeah. oh, I went a little too far. So you go back and you do the right side. They try to match the left side. And then you go yeah, back and, and do then the you're left spreading side. more and more and more. You, dude, and it, it, yeah. it very rapidly goes, uh, can fall apart. And then, yeah, you basically <laughs> yeah. have a snare drum size snare bed, you know? Yeah. 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 You re edge the drum at that point. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Well, that it's, makes it's, sense. It, it, I mean, it, it, you got to learn. Yeah. Well, and, Max and, and I have probably done thousands of snare dudes a piece. Everyone, yeah, everyone. First off, has been there. At least uh, that in our field, that would b do the snare beds by hand. Everyone has, you know, just massacred their own snare beds. But then that's also how you get super, super, super good. Is like recovery and acknowledging yeah. and knowing how to get ahead of it. Yeah. Well, that, that was our motto. It's like it's yeah. like <laughs> how how do you fix your mistakes? That was yeah. that's just. That was custom building 101 for us in the beginning because it, there were no there were no books there were no schools there was nothing that we had to learn from other than well let's just see if this works and if we mess it up how do we fix it yeah and yeah that, that yeah there was fix, no training manual no yeah, and the fixing <laughs> part you actually learn new techniques by fixing a problem for sure sure you know? for sure yeah. So uh, I think people also like to hear the stories about like, like obviously the building, but like the roster of artists was pretty wild oh, with Orange yeah. County. I mean, yeah, yeah, it was. and Jeremy, were you artist relations manager at Orange County? Is that correct? Uh, there's no such thing. There was no right. such okay. thing. There, right. there was I read no, it on Modern Drummer or something like yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a phrase that someone gave me when I, I was doing some sort of interview with them and uh that is not 100 percent correct i dealt with a lot of artists though and i okay. did cater to them as did max as did sure. jo as did josh as did yeah. daniel that we we were like the four people that dealt with the artists and the cool thing is is like the ones that i dealt with personally they would call me this is what i'm looking for this is the sound i want to get blah 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 how can I, how, what can you do to help me get this? And that's where I kind of learned the idea of like, don't be afraid to tell somebody what they want is bullshit. Hmm. Because interesting. You, you, well, you, what happens is you get somebody that wants a specific sound. They play a certain way and what they, what they want in their mind is not going to be the best for the way they play to get that sound. Yeah. 
we know we know how to get that sound so i'm always going to recommend something that may not be what you want but at the end of the day i can guarantee yeah. when you close your eyes that is what you want uh, i know it's what you need <laughs> it's what you man. need a hundred you know you know hundred percent so hundred percent and then yeah, yeah and that yeah. was that was really beautiful though it was like in developing those relationships is like you could yeah. suggest things and then people would very aptly be like yeah okay like i trust you i you know and it's yeah. i mean it's not like you know it's not like we're handing them a guitar or something that's a completely not a drum it's still a drum <laughs> yeah. but yeah. you know it's like yeah if somebody like I, I would always ask people like how do you want uh, how do you want to feel because like drums are really about how you feel right it's yeah. not like you can sit behind the world's most expensive drum set and eventually like that excitement of like it's still you know of, of it being this expensive object is going to fade and it's going to be a drum and then you're going to like play yeah. it whatever or you can go to your cousin's house and he's got this like cb custom warped just pile in his basement and then you have like the sickest like funk jam session you've ever played because it feels great so it always asks people yeah. like hey how do you want your drums to make you feel because that's really genuinely what it's about and then yeah. a lot of the times like the aesthetic vision of like your drum isn't necessarily going to match how you want your drums to feel you know and then that's yes. where you that's where you get somebody into what they actually need and not what they think that they want, but that'll get old in a month. You know, you, you just like, hey, like, look, we built thousands of drums. I know what's cool. I know what's not cool. I know this like new thing is exciting, but like, dude, trust yeah. me, like, yeah. this is our staple. This is the bread and butter. Yeah. Go flat black. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, or flat black. Yeah. I mean, a perfect, <laughs> a, a perfect example for me recently of that is, you know, I've been working with Dom Howard from Muse for the past seven years. And when we started, his whole idea was wood. And like, I listened to the music and I'm like, mm, you know, wood, the wood sounds great, but man, metal, metal is going to really accentuate the sounds that you, you want to produce, you know? And it took literally, like we built him a copper kit a while back. He loved it. But uh, most recently we built him a, uh, a galvanized kit, which is what I had been pushing since day one. Yeah. To me, galvanized steel is the end all be all for Q specifically. Yeah, fact. And you mm. know, yeah. And when and he, finally he's like, I guess I have everything else. So let me let me try one. Blew his mind. I mean, he's. He, <laughs> I talked. I talked to him recently. He's like, all I want is that metal kit. Is that galvanized steel? That's all I want to play. And, wow. and it's because I I felt that that was the sound. I felt that that was the feel. It just sometimes it takes a while, and some people are a little more um, hesitant to go with our ideas, our recommendations, because you know what? You're the artist. You know you want what you want, and if that's what you want, we will accommodate you to a point. I don't mean that in a in a like everything everybody wants is stupid, and only what we make is good. I don't mean that in any any way, shape, or form. What I mean is like. If you if you have in your head what you think you need again, and it's not what it, it's not going to sound the way you want it to, and I can't persuade you to alter or or have us come in the middle somehow, I'm not the person to be building the drum kit. At the end of the day, you're going to get that drum kit. You're going to sit behind it. You're going to play it. You're not going to be 100 satisfied, and you're going to go around and tell your friends this kit sucks. Yes, it's not totally. what I wanted. Don't. But it is what you wanted. I built you what you wanted. You just don't like the way it sounds and you didn't take my recommendations. It takes guts to say to some of the biggest drummers in the world, like, that's not what you want. But I think sometimes people get said yes to so much in that position that it's nice to have a little bit of a pushback. And like, I can trust these guys because they're actually being honest with me and they know what I want. And they're not just like, you know, patting you on the bottom and saying, here's what you want. Here it is. It's just yeah. like, no, you... Yeah, this it, is what you. This is what's best for you. It also doesn't hurt though that you know, like if somebody really, like the difference between metal types, for example, they each sonically have like a very different characteristic, like tonally, yeah. feel everything. Like some just crush in the studio, you know. Others are just like jack of all trades, and it's like you can't just talk somebody out of wanting something and say because. So it's like, when you know what you're talking about and you can nail somebody down with all the reasons, here's this thing, here's that thing, 
And sometimes it's not always sonically. Sometimes it's like, yeah. dude, this is a nightmare to keep clean. A nightmare to keep clean. Yeah. Or it stains. <laughs> totally. And people are like, oh, I never thought about that. You know, it's like sure. weird little things like that. But so, yeah. again, with experience, you know, and trust. And then people and, are. And, and we're, yeah. And we're never like, you don't want that. We're never yeah. so direct. Arrogant. That it's it's, yeah. it's arrogant. Because, <laughs> you don't because want what's it. the point? What's the point? You know? It, but Come it is. But it is. <laughs> it's definitely a suggestion and sometimes you have to push that suggestion just a little bit harder than you normally would the other thing is is that the people that we deal with most of the time they they come to us because they want our expertise so they're more willing to listen um but we also talk direct we don't have like a salesperson talking to them it's us and yeah that this is where this is where the whole like dealer network thing kind of comes into play. We have very specific dealers and the dealers that we work with are very drum centric. They're very knowledgeable about drums. They understand drums. They understand our drums. So I feel confident that when they get a customer in and they're like, I want a 22 by 22 copper bass drum, they're going to say, that's not what they're going to do. I feel confident in that. You know, if we went to like, if we started selling through Guitar Center, they would just send us a PO. We'd have to make it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Luckily, we have like these mom and pop shops that are so good and so understanding of what we do that they do help the process. Um, and also, if the client isn't sure, call us. So, yeah. You know, yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. I, I talk to people all day long. I'll, I'll spend an hour and a half on a phone call going through all the differences of the different metals, the different woods, different sizes and how they react and all that stuff. And finally, I usually get guys that are like, okay, I have too much information. I don't know what to do with it. So <laughs> just know. build me the drums. I mean, yeah, what yeah. you're saying is like, but really in the end, the, the like uh, customer facing part of it is super positive. It's not like well, uh, yeah. anything yeah, negative. Yeah. It's very happy. And just like, yeah, we're going to make you an awesome drum set. You know, that's the end yeah. result that's that you're going to like better. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of moving towards getting into like Q and talking about Q, um, just to touch on some other stuff real quick, because Jeremy, I know more about you from reading online. Max, as we said before, you're kind of a man of mystery on the Internet, <laughs> as uh, <laughs> as we discussed. But so, Jeremy, I know you did some tech work and I think I got this off your LinkedIn, which is the first time I've used LinkedIn as a oh, resource shit. for the podcast. But I don't know how Queens of the Stone Age. Gwen Stefani, Nine Inch Nails, Katy Perry, Nora Jones, Muse. I'm, there's probably some others in there uh, working as a drone tech. Slipknot. Yeah. yeah. It's an impressive That's roster, awesome. dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's there's incredible. More. There's more in there, but you know. I'll, yeah. Um, well, those I'll, are I'll, those are those, those, those are my those are my highlights. I'll take those. <laughs> yeah, those are pretty awesome. But so the story I saw online is that you were working with Adam Marcello of Katy Perry in 2010 and like I think it said you built a backup kit for him instead yeah. of ordering new drums and then from his primary builder and then um that backup kit ended up being the main kit and that yep. what i read on i think sure's website which had an article there about you was uh yeah. was that the birth of q pretty much that was the birth of q 100 percent. it was all adam's fault <laughs> he knows it. he's we to blame bl we blame him all the time anything that goes wrong is adam's fault um yeah you know <laughs> it, it was a weird thing the company he was endorsing before built him this uh, acrylic kit that was frosted with LED lights in it. And the way they had wired the lights was they use, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Romex. Romex, yeah. Romex is, is a hard, a, a solid copper cable that you use in the walls of your house for electricity. <laughs> you can so find it at your used, local Home Depot. They, they used Romex. <laughs> to run cables from the lights out of the drum and then they used trailer hitch adapters <laughs> as the connectors and then they took they took the excess of it and they put all the wire ties on it and then they wrapped it in e-tape so it made this giant e-tape phallic thing and then that went to <laughs> That went to the light box. And I'm like, wow. I can't, I can't tour like this. I can't go and set up. I mean, number one, if any water gets on that, I mean, you're talking serious issues. So I had to, I, I 
had to rip out all the lighting, rip out all of that crap, put new lighting in, put four pin XLR jacks, wire it to the four pin, have everything nice and clean so where I can just click off a cable and, and that's done. That's it. Clean. And, uh, Adam comes to me, he's like, hey, man, I had literally just done this, right? It took me three days because I'd never dealt with this before. Usually when we did stuff at Orange County Drum, it was a, it was a cable with a plug in it. We never did LED. Well, we did some LED stuff. Later. We did yeah. Some, yeah, we did some weird stuff using like rope light. But, yeah. um, but with Adam, this was, a, this was a new thing for me. So I, fi- I figured out how to do this. He comes to me as I finish, and I'm like, this sucks. Cool. I'm having them build me another kit. And then you can do the same thing to that kit. I was like, how about this? Let me just build you the kit from ground up. And then I could just have this already done. So I don't have to pull that stuff out and put new stuff in. I don't want to do things twice. So we, we talked about what he wanted. He said, I want those slingerland, you know, clamshell knockoffs. I'm like, cool. And I built him the kit and it sounded amazing and it looked awesome and everything was clean and tidy. And, uh, he just, he just loved it so much. He's like, okay, cool. You should start your own company. And, uh, I was just like, nah, not interested after the whole thing with guitar center and, and OCDP, especially at the end of it, I just didn't really have it in me to build drums. I actually, when I got my shop in San Pedro, it had an apartment above, so I lived above my shop. I wanted to make furniture, and I wanted to fix my truck that got smashed, you know? <laughs> and that was about it. That was about it. And then built, I built the kit anyway, and at some point, I was in London. Orange County Drum had all of their tooling and stuff in a storage unit where we were actually still building drums out of here and there. Max, you remember that spot? Yeah. And... Yeah. uh and when I had left on tour, there was there was nobody to help out at Orange County Drum. So they they locked the door. They John stopped paying the bill, and I had my rehearsal studio in the same storage unit. So I knew the manager, and she's she's a Brit. She called me while I was in London. Jeremy, what's going on with with John? He hasn't paid me. He he owes me four or five months worth of rent, and I'm like, listen. I know you, you're about to auction off the stuff. Don't do anything until I come home. I'm going to send you the money for all those months right now. And so I paid for it out of my pocket. Wow. And the day I landed, I went straight from the airport with my buddy, Matt Mitchell, to a U-Haul, picked up a U-Haul, went straight down there, grabbed everything that I could fit in the U-Haul that I could use, left the rest of the shit, took it back to my shop. And then I all of a sudden... I found myself with drum building tools and I'm like, Oh man. And that's, that was wow. the beginning, man. I mean, all right. So I know someone in line is going to say, if I don't ask, they're going to say, why didn't you ask this? What was in that storage unit? What kind of stuff did you pull out? I mean, was it everything? Was it routers? Was it gold? What bricks. was in there? <laughs> gold bricks. Gold bricks. Gold bricks yeah. Man. Yeah. <laughs> there's some, there's some awesome. very, there's some very unique tooling that we have that was built by John Machado's brother, Joe who's a freak of nature. He, he, yeah. he, he basically, his job is making, uh, he's, a, he's a machinist, but he's also an engineer. Um, and he made a drilling machine. He made a, what we call our drum lathe, which is, which is a, a horizontal uh, a claw that op- it basically just opens up to hold the drum and it'll rotate in different ways. Yeah. And it, it is the huh. mo- one of the most essential I mean- tools invaluable yeah really oh yeah, yeah. Oh, for yeah. us i mean yeah so some proprietary like stuff that's not off the shelf drum building stuff no. i mean some Hand, serious handmade handmade yeah yeah wow. the, these legit. tools were legitimately handmade like dude joe, joe is an awesome. impressive savant like yeah yeah wow <laughs> man can't spe- can't I, spell to save his life but he can definitely build a machine yeah. you don't need to you don't need to spell when you're cool <laughs> yeah, no. exactly. But man, I mean, that stuff could have ended up on like Storage Wars or some like, you know what I mean? That, like one of those well, that, TV that's, shows. That's, that's what I was worried about. That's yeah. that's the yeah. main thing I was worried about. And like, you know, that's that's history right there. And it's something that Joe put. A, uh, Joe's a dear friend of mine. Same with Max. And like, he put his heart into that. And the last thing he wanted was for those tools to go. So yeah. I took them. You know, I took them to my shop. 
And uh, awesome. And I so you know after talking with Adam for a while, came up with a name and One Ten Customs. Whoa! Podcast, podcast over. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was the first iteration of the name for. Uh, that was a preliminary name. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was it. One Ten Customs. Okay, that was like first on the list. It's kind of yeah, like yeah. an inside joke. It never really made it anywhere. Sure, it but, is. Yeah. yeah, but it reminds me of like Battlefield and like all these other names that are just like so namey. I don't know. It's just yeah. it's too it's too much. It's too yeah. much for me. And Q kind of settled in because I was like, oh, quality drums, but quality drums sound like your, you know, $250 import with cymbals and hardware. And so I was like, you know what, screw it. Let's just drop it all. Q, call it a day. So Q comes from quality and that's, that's where it's at. I think that's awesome. And I, I agree with, I mean, Q is perfect, but yeah, the quality, quality drums, you do get that like Japanese kind of like, you know, here's an American word that sounds good. Yeah. That kind of thing. yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. Q is awesome, man. And it, it looks cool, which I think Thank that's you. a big part of it visually. It's like you have to have a logo that looks a name. That I mean, works a, with a, logo a couple of years ago, it, it didn't work in our favor. Uh, well, you, you, I mean, know, you are a QAnon brand, yeah. but uh, <laughs> yeah, the amount of times, you know, it's funny. We would go with like our artists were so awesome and, and, and most of them stuck with the Q, even though they were getting so much shit from their yeah. fans. Or you Man. read it in the comments. I can't listen to this band anymore because they're Q affiliated. Dude. And it's just like, wow. you're clearly an idiot. You know, yeah. I didn't and, think of that. Oh, oh yeah. it was it was so heavy that to the. To that point, we started letting our artists know, yo, you don't have any obligation to us to rock the queue. We don't give free drums. Every artist pays for their drums. So therefore, you can do what you want. If you love the drums, you're going to play them. You're going to talk about them. And people are going to know that you don't need a logo on there to make people know what you're playing. No, I mean, your drums in particular, Q drums are pretty recognizable, which, of course, we'll talk about, you know, the makeup and how you can just spot it from a mile away. But that's cool. And it's good to know that everyone buys their drums, because uh, I think that's pretty common in in drum building where no one's really unless you're a huge, huge mega drummer. No one's really handing out free drum sets that much um, You'd be that surprised. I, as far as I can tell. Yeah. Well, You'd yeah, I mean, you guys would know better than me. You'd be surprised. I mean, we, we number one, we just don't have the uh, infrastructure. We don't have the financial backing to be able to do that. Also, I mean, it's just it would it would have buried us from the get go. And the thing is, is that when you pay for something with your own money, you appreciate it more than if it was given to you. And and I feel like to me, our artists appreciate what they have because they did have to spend money on it, and. We have lost very, very few artists. As a matter of fact, we've given maybe a couple kits away, and those are the artists that we lost. And, and to wow. me, and to me, it just it was proof positive. And it wasn't even giving them away to give them away. It was more like, hey, check this out, use it, and then you know, it just kind of fell through the cracks because I'm yeah, I'm a, a, I'm easy. Yeah, if you don't have yeah, any skin, in, sure. if you don't have any skin in the game, you know, yeah. I'd like to get to the point where I can give people free stuff and not care whether they left or stayed. But again, I want people to love what they have, not just be like, oh, those are my tools. You know? Yeah. I want yeah. that to be I mean, these your, are your favorite tool, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Max, let's jump over to you and talk a little bit more about when, when you came on board and yeah. um and just got involved and, and what that was like kind of, I mean, you guys have like, I think like all the OCDP builders where like you guys have like a bond that's like, Oh, for sure. Dude. Only a handful of you guys have, but what was that like? For sure. Well, I mean, uh, to speak to like orange County. Yeah. Like definitely uh, when you had Corey on, he, one thing I, I, I take away was like, he's like, yeah, that is a moment in time that we, you did, we did share with a handful of people. And I don't think at the time, like personally, I, didn't realize like it's grandeur or not even to say that it was grand, but just like, I, you know, it was hard to separate the forest from the trees. It was just like, I was living my life. Yes. I was working at a drum shop. I was doing my thing. And it's like, Oh yeah, it was like this moment in history that like now as I get older and I realize I'm like, Oh, it did mean something. And it was really cool. And it was really cool to be a part of. And he's right. We do share that together. Jeremy and I, however, I feel like we have this different bond. Like one, we have these weird, like shadowed parallels 
we have these weird parallels yeah. where it's like, dude, we used to BMX at the same spots. We went to the same yeah. high school, didn't know each other. Yeah. We both worked at Guitar Center. You know, like a lot of these like weird little interesting things, like even mutual people that we knew. And uh, and still to this day, it's like there's always like some circulating circulating connection somehow, you know, and all that aside. And then there's the side that like we speak a language that w- one another understands when it comes to drums, you know, and to, and to drum building and to, in essence, to problem solving. Like we understand and frankly, we enjoy the act of problem solving. You know, here's a problem. Let's like get to the bottom of it. How do we do it? Here's how I want to do it. Here's how you want to do it. Here's how it yep. needs to be done. You know, meet yep, in the middle. Totally. And then through that, like, yeah, you develop like obviously like a kin. Like I'm eternally grateful to Jeremy, dude. One being like still to this day, like my biggest supporter. It's ridiculous. Like I don't get it. But you know, <laughs> he like employed me for six years, which in that six years, you know, I purchased a house off of those eight dollars an hour. 850, you know, that was great. Wait, well, oh, come uh, on, come on. I'm, I'm come kidding, on. I'm kidding. No, 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 no. I, I paid you, I, I at least paid you 825. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> after my 90 day yeah. probation. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it was like legitimately, I'm eternally grateful. And, and and the day that I left Q, I said this, and it was weird because it was like when I left Q, oh, kind of like happened off. quickly. It was something that came up. And that was a dude, I day. fell apart, dude, like fell apart. Like, it was weird. It was like, all of a sudden, I couldn't even talk. And I was like, oh, even now, it's like coming back to me, you know. But sure. yeah, it's like, dude, you got me. I was like, I was like, cute for six years. I bought a house. I had two kids. I got married. We went through a pandemic. Dude, that supersedes like everything I had done before, you know, in my life. Like, that I was just like coasting along. And I was like, whoa, this is like really That's different. Love and, right there. Yeah. And like, we talked to each other every day. Like, I didn't even realize it at the time. But I mean, we literally talked to each other every day. Even if it was about yeah. work, it was it was never from a place of just like just business, you know? Yeah. And like it wasn't this like fairy tale relationship either, where like him and I yeah. were like always like th- the biggest fans of each other. But like it was how you love a brother. And I mean that to the fullest. Totally. Where it's like I kn- even yeah. in that moment when you want to stab that dude in the face, it's like <laughs> somebody comes around I des- that corner. I deserve I always deserve it. Too. Yeah. Somebody comes around that corner, bad fit <laughs> bad, you know harms him in some way dude you'll rip your own arm off to like hurt that person like it's yeah the, i mean it dude it's like it's a genuine like love dude when i say like how i love my brother and it's like yeah we've developed it through sports and mountain biking and spending time together and just like yeah man so it's like that was like probably like the best part about being a q was like absolutely you know love this, you. i love you my man you know that, yeah right? I'll, dude i love you too man you know that's incredible mm. yeah Fucking so you know when he's texting you saying dude can you finish buffing those screws he comes from a place of love yeah still <laughs> i'm still waiting to be relieved from my screw buffing duties yeah. dude i'm still like, dude i have no hey. fingerprints and my, please let me stop at my core i'm still a 20 20 year old <laughs> buffing bad screws waiting to be relieved okay yeah. but no Man, but yeah i mean it's like, poetry yeah i feel it's uh i i mean i, I le- legitimately feel fortunate to have like uh oh man you know, yeah. Yeah. We'll stop. That's incredible. No, you guys have a special... Uh, how many employees were at Q? I mean, really? Because obviously you guys have a special background and relationship, but what was... I mean, how well, many people is, were there? You, you're going to laugh at this, and yeah. uh, I'm I, sorry, everybody who thinks Q is massive. Um, it was me and Max <laughs> 85% of the time. Yeah. Well, it was, Mac, it was Max 85% of the time because my dumb ass decided to keep two of them um and it was a, we have a handful of guys that i gotta give tons of love to Dude. uh ed ed davis the, the gravy, number one call, call it call him yeah. strong gravy dude i mean fuck literally he, one of a kind he it, yeah everybody that's been a part of q is 100 percent one of a kind roger co obviously mm-hmm. alon tommy Mm-hmm. You know, um, we've had, we've had a couple other people come in, like Dylan. Um, uh, we had some of our friends. Aaron Steele came in to help out one time. Yeah. Um, Nick Nick Sir, the sweatiest elbow in the, in the West <laughs> in, in the business. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh man, just but, uh, real uh, title. No one wants. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> well, we have this. We have this thing where you know we brush the insides of our copper shells after we've done. After they're built, we do this really nice finished brush. 
And 16 inch floor toms are the bane of everybody's existence in yeah. that polishing. And when we'd have guys that just wanted to come in and help out and see what it was like to build this, this is the job that we would give them. And so you reach down inside and you go on, you know, horizontally, cause you don't want to lay the drum down and scratch the finish. He would take his sweaty elbow and bump the side, not knowing that that sweat gets into that freshly opened copper and oh, just dude. starts the yeah. patina. It makes it even, <laughs> like, oh, makes it even harder wow. to clean. Like, jeez, natural dirty patina is okay to clean, whatever. But like sweat induced, <laughs> like acid patina, especially elbow sweat. Yeah, I mean, that's, everybody's like, especially like you're working on a drum and you're sweating, and sweat naturally falls. And like, dude, you get a drop yep. of sweat and you like immediately panic clean it up because you don't want it to stay in the inside of the drum. Also, yeah, sixteens yeah, are perfect length for the average elbow to wrist. So yeah. when you're in there, you're just weep, 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 your, your elbow shining. Smearing. Your elbow yeah. shining the catty corner, yeah. The other we, side we, of the we've tried to come up with better methods, and we've gotten some that helps, but it's still, it's still the most tedious, most daunting, everybody hates it task, but it's got to get done. Otherwise, it just yeah. doesn't look the same. Yeah, that's yeah, true. You know? I mean, that raises the question in general, though, like about in the story of Q, like how did you guys get into the metal drums uh -huh. that, that you were like that are beautiful and so you know you guys are well known for did you learn it at orange county all right this is probably a story i shouldn't tell but i'm going to tell it anyway the first snare drum i ever built with wood re rings was a drum by a little a little canadian dude and uh and uh the drummer who owned the drum came in and was like I, this thing's ripping heads left and right. I can't tune it. I thought it was going to be great. I don't know what to do with it. And me at the time, I'm like, let me see what I can do. So I started messing with it. And I'm like, you know what? I could probably put some wood re rings in this, see what happens. Put some wood re rings in it, cut, cut an actual snare bed on it. Um, it didn't have an air vent at the time. Um, I think that the builder was pushing for this non air vent snare drum thing. Like the air would come out where the snare beds are or whatever. I don't know, but it was just super choked. So I put an air vent in it. I think Max, you helped, you helped snare bed it. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Sounds, yeah, but anyway, sounds right. it, it was a titanium shell. It was a titanium shell. Yeah. So we put it together and the thing that was thing. ripping. Dude, it was sick. It was, was yeah. And, and I'm not one to like take, mess with anybody else's builds but this one this this particular drummer um sammy j watson from apex theory who's ridiculous yeah. and he was at he was at mi when i was at when i was i think he was doing something at mi while i was there and we just kind of became friends whatever i haven't spoken to him in years but um uh i took that drum and handed it back to him and he's like dude it's a brand new drum it's insane. Mm. Didn't rip heads anymore because it had a wood edge, but it didn't have that that bite that the titanium mm -hmm. would normally have. Yeah. It was a little, it was a little more subdued. It was a little more controlled because of the wood re-rings. So we started doing that in a lot of the snare drums. Like we would take black beauty shells, cut the edges off, put wood re-rings mm. in, and it just kind of evolved. So the drum kit thing happened in 2008. I was working for Nine Inch Nails. Josh Reese was the drummer. They had just put out this album called Ghosts, and it was all this weird, it's an instrumental album, and it's got all these weird organic sounds. It's not all electronic. And a lot of the sounds are like chains on a pizza platter as a snare, snare drum and like super crazy stuff. And part of, the sh part of the show was a second drum kit would come out, and it was like this weird organic drum kit where I used like a... a, a the five gallon water jug as a rack tom. I used a metal trash can with uh, tambourine jingles in it as a floor tom. Um, mm. And we needed to build a bass drum. So when I went and got scrap metal, I got a bunch of galvanized steel. I'm like thinking we could use them as symbols or something, but they were like just dead as shit. So I'm talking to Max. I'm like, what the hell are we going to do? He's like, let's roll it into a shell. I'm like, okay, yeah. well then, then what? He's like, let's put rivets on it. I'm like, cool. So we rivet the seams and he's like, let's throw some wood re rings in there, pop them in. And it's like, dude, this is awesome. <laughs> and it sounded rad. It was a 20 inch bass drum, you know? Yeah. So I took it to the rehearsals and it ended up sounding really good. 
<laughs> too problem good. is wow. it needed to sound trashy <laughs> too good yeah and i didn't have i didn't do i didn't take the necessary methods to try and make it sound trashy i was just like this is rough <clears throat> and so from that we ended up using like a uh a dw dw bass drum woofer and ran symbols like splash symbols different sizes some flat pieces of metal off of a screw and a hanger across the front bass drum head so every time you would hit it'd just be like you know like ching ring sure. kind of thing matt mitchell a friend of mine who is uh he's a producer chief songwriter of Pussifer. he had just got Pussifer project off the ground with maynard and he was at that time a guitar tech for nine inch nails and he's like dude i love that bass drum can you make me a whole kit so that's when we built we built him a 28 14 16 18 and that was like that was the first galvanized steel kit we had ever made yeah he and still has that it kit. sounded he still has that kit yeah. and it sounds so good that we were just like huh that was it for that was it for orange county drum well no we did one more for frank zuma uh-huh at that time remember we had done we had started doing like rolled stainless shells yes so we had we had we, had we had yeah we had done I, we we never did kit, but we did like a few different snare drums. Like I I actually made one for myself. Hey, I thought we did the one kit that we took for Nam that had that was polished with wood oh, rings in maybe. it. Maybe, maybe your yeah. memory would be better than mine, dude. Nam N- yeah. Nam is just a blur, dude. Uh, yeah, yeah, like, always. They all they all blend together. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, like you said, I mean, we we were just doing like snare drums and stuff for the most part, sure. and, and and the stainless steel stuff. And that's kind of when that's about the time Orange County Drum like ended up moving into storage unit. I was on tour. Max was trying to do something there, but there wasn't much to to do with. And it just sort of fell by the wayside. When I started Q with Adam, Matt Mitchell again was with he was guitar tech on Katy Perry or, or playback or whatever. And it was just Matt and I as the main text for Katy Perry at this time. And he was still doing Pussifer. And he's like, hey, I want a new kit. You think you could do copper? Matt has the first galvanized kit, the first copper kit. Mm-hmm. And uh, and they still are rocking to this day. Yeah. Um, but that, that really set the bar for what we were going to do later on. And, you know we were so new at it we hadn't perfected it yet we were just like getting orders and we're like oh so let's just build it <laughs> yeah <laughs> but then we found some flaws That's what happens and max really kind of like took it to here it was here and they were sounding fantastic max is like i'm gonna make them better and now they're like now they're here and that it's the formula we use it's they're ridiculous we're using thicker metal instead of thinner metal, but we're cutting the re-rings different, fit in properly so there's no slippage and all that. It's just like next level. And that 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 plays to what Max was talking about earlier, how we will we will riff off of each other. We will butt heads often. And mm-hmm. part of this was more like a production speed thing. And I didn't like the idea of changing how we put the re-rings in. And when he did it and he showed me, I was like, okay, I'm an idiot. That this is this well, you is you admit when you're wrong. Yeah. Well, you you have you have to you know you have to, and when you have someone as talented as Max, it really makes you go okay, fine. And it really didn't take any more time. Actually, it took less time because you're just you're you're spending more time in the calculations and the measurements, and less time in the actual like building. And this didn't work out. I have to cut another ray ring and do all this other stuff. So, you know. Yeah. I mean, Max, was this was this like a natural like? I mean, did you feel like a a fish in uh, like like a fish in water? I guess I'd say where like I've built wood drums for such a long time, going to metal was super easy. Yeah, well, well so I thought my drum career was like over. Like, um, I had kind of like started a new year chapter of my life. You know, like I I wasn't really playing music as much as I was, and I was just like, well, you know, the drum thing that was like a cool phase of my life like let's see what i'm doing whatever and uh and at the time i was working for a hotel like downtown i was like valeting cars downtown la dude it was awesome i was like a great job i was a valet yeah dude yep. respect man like great job camaraderie <laughs> fun cash in hand yep. 
And uh, yeah, and then Jeremy, like, we had met up. He was on tour with Katy Perry. We'd met up to go eat downtown. We hadn't seen each other, like, in a while. And yeah, years. Yeah, he's like, oh, dude, like, oh, I'm, I started a drum company. He's like, dude, come down and build with me. Like, literally, like, kids on a playground. Like, dude, come down and build with me. Like, is Max home? You know, like, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, can you come I, was like play? <laughs> I was like, sure, okay. But yeah, like, I kind of felt, uh, not rusty, but just kind of like, oh, I haven't even thought about this in so long, you know? And the same, like people, family and friends would be like, why don't you start your own drum company and stuff? And I just had zero interest, dude, like zero interest. Because yeah. um, it was just, yeah, it was just, it was what it was. It wasn't this like, it was never this like business thing. So it was just like, nah, I'm good. Sure. So I started going down, like I went down to Q, we just like hung out a little bit and did whatever. And just to check out a shop and like, just to like see what had become. And, you know, it was like seeing all the like old tools from like the, the shop and stuff like that. And weird things that like I had intimately spent on that note. Oh no. What do you oh, got? Yeah, dude. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy recognized this dude. But anyways, so, you know, seeing tools I had intimately spent like thousands of hours. Oh my God. Oh, oh yeah, dude. <laughs> Okay. Can you describe that for okay. people who were just like this listening is, in the car? This is an inexpensive uh, American stainless steel, like technically it's a butcher knife. And we use this knife to cut wrapped material um, up until the day I left. Q. We mm -hmm. use this at Orange County Drum. We use this at Q. I have cut thousands of drums with this. Like, so this is you would use to cut off the excess material on a, on a shell. And um, certain materials use different tools, but a knife like an, 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 I have found oh, works a lot. And you can see like the, the, the blade best. the blade is deformed because I've resharpened it so many times. But it was always a joke. That's like so amazing. when I used it at Q, <laughs> when I used it at Q, Jeremy's like, dude, you're the only one who uses that POS, you know? And, yeah. and then you even said, you're like, dude, if you ever leave here, you better take it. And I was like, 100% I'm taking this knife. <laughs> Like the thought hadn't put out, crossed my mind, but I was like, "Yeah, this is mine, dude. Like, I'm, this, I'm taking it." So, anyways, so I go to the shop, and so there's all these, that's awesome. There's all these old tools and like all my old, all my old friends, you know, like yeah. things that I'd spent with, and it was cool. It was super cool, and it was like we just hung out and ca caught up, whatever. And then, um, like a short time after, he was like, "Hey, I'm going to Nam. Like, can you help me build some drums?" Like, and he was, dude, straight up, he's like, "Dude, I'll, I'll pay you." And I was like, well, "Okay." At this, so at this time, <laughs> my my now wife. And I were like, we were at that point, we were like trying to buy a house and stuff. And I was like, dude, let's, I'm, I'm down. Like I'm, I'm working two jobs anyways. Like let's like burn it. I'm down to burn it and, and, and squirrel some cash. So I was started working at the shop and it was like, it was cool, dude. It was like, um, all these things that legitimately were muscle memory, like that I had forgotten to do. Like, it, it, you know, and it's not, I mean, it's not like rocket science, but when you're flattening a big shell, we have this really big sanding disc that we use to flatten drums. So you have like one cohesive edge and it's like takes you know, a certain stance and a certain, it has a feel to it. And then like, there's like yep. a rhythm to it and, and all this stuff. And it was cool to just like, yeah, I'm, I'm like back building drums, but you know, a lot of this stuff within to, to a certain point, I was super comfortable with like wood drums, rapping drums, doing things like that. And then it was like, there's this other side of like metal side that was like more intimidating, but I had done a ton of metal work on the side for myself, like building things for people like, industrial things or uh, metal furniture so i wasn't like ultra intimidated but there was you know it's like oh like a big kit is, is a big thing so the way my mind works is i'm always trying to find like to initially get back to the question you had originally asked me <laughs> i went on a tangent sure. of like well i was born <laughs> no, no, in 1741 it's, it's cool to get your input. <laughs> yeah no i like getting your input, um, yeah you know so how my brain works is i'm always trying to find the most efficient way to do something and i and i, and I think like efficiency of movement and still to this day I, I i work like that like uh i think it comes from working when i was really young i worked in the restaurant industry and i think you have to kind of be like aware of your surroundings and like efficient with your with your movements and i think that's something that carried over and uh so when i was at q or when i was at oc or was at any job i've ever had is like i'm always thinking of like efficiency of movement efficiency of movement and and consistency is like the big thing for me, like consistency, consistency. And obviously I want to make in anything I'm doing, I want it to be like the best that I can do. And so naturally, like when, you know, like Jeremy was always 
dude, that was like, I think that was like one of our biggest strengths. It's like Jeremy would always bring me this puzzle that he put together. And then it was like, hey, man, like rough edges. Yeah, but it was, it was, but it was a complete puzzle. And then he, he, it was just like, hey, man, like make this understandable. And it, it, it's not like he, he would literally say that to me, but it was what would happen. I would, yep. when he would show me how to do something or like how I would always ask, how do you do it? Because I, I literally, legitimately, I don't want to know how to do it. I want to know how you do it. And then I back, would backtrack my thinking as to like, okay, well, that seems like a useless step. Like, you know, or something like that. Or like, well, there, there's an opportunity for error. Um, and then down the line, there's like three compounded errors. So you have this big error, you know. Yeah. And then so basically that. I just wanted like, A, yeah. I wanted to not waste my time messing stuff up. Cause that feeling sucks. <laughs> and oh, then, God, yeah. you know, so I just kind of like naturally happens. And then we would get to a point where, you know, when it would make sense when you'd have to explain it to somebody once or maybe twice. And they would like sure. quite literally hit the ground running and you're like, Oh, well that's yeah. obviously the way to do it. You know, yeah. like yeah. you basically filter through and you're like, Oh, well pff, I was ice skating uphill. Now I'm cruising, you know, like, well, it needs to be repeatable. Cause like, yeah. it's a company. So it uh -huh. needs to be like, here's, here's what we're doing each time. And it's been refined. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And uh, yeah, and, and I mean, I always logged everything that I did at Q um, for that exact reason that I was like, well, one, there should be like a standard of procedure, which we never had in Orange County. No. You know, these were like lessons yeah. that we learned. It was just like this is what's expected, I think. And then a lot of the times, the I think portion was like, well, that was you interjecting, like, yeah, this is how it should be. This is how I want it to be. And then everyone would basically meet, meet that standard, you know? And then at Q, I, I, I upheld what the name meant. Like it really meant something to me, you know, yeah. sure. that, and it was like, okay, well, so then that needs to be repeatable. And it also needs to not be this like cauldron of secrets that like I keep to myself in a dungeon. <laughs> I had it written down and I wanted everyone to know it's like it also for myself because like i forget stuff all the time but yeah to be like hey like i would make charts for like here's like a ratio chart for like sizes and stuff yeah. um and and that way anybody could pick up and relatively have an understanding of what's happening i mean i i still use those charts to this day it's still awesome. it's just i go to i go to the binder i open it up i'm like okay this is the setback this is this is the length for a 14. If I'm doing this material, it's yeah, it, it's invaluable. And uh, that's, you know, when I had asked Max to help, my, my goal was to have somebody I didn't have to babysit. Number one, period. I mean, because, you know, we're I'm doing this new thing that I'm still trying to figure out. I can't sit there and babysit and teach you what to do if I'm still trying to figure it out in my own way. So Max comes in, he's like, you shouldn't do that. I'm like, I like it. He's like, you shouldn't do it. <laughs> okay, cut it. And then it just kind of evolved. And then all of a sudden now it's like, bam, we've got jigs, we've got this, we've got that. And you lay it out, you do the thing. It still takes skill to build them. Right. But a lot of the guesswork is taken out of it because of these steps that Max implemented. So yeah. Huge. And you can repeat and do it. And I mean, if you had to in a, put down a number, how long would you say it takes to build? You can pick brass, copper, steel, whatever. It, how long does it take you guys to build a kit start to finish one of these amazing drum sets? I mean, you can build a shell pack in a day, but you got to let yeah. the glue rest. So. Yeah. I mean, like uninterrupted, like work hours without like dry times. Like realistically, you could build a kit in two days, like depending on the, hmm. the gnarliness of the finish. You know, sure. Um, but yeah. yeah, I mean, like, if awesome. you were just a machine that didn't need to eat, like, like twenty <laughs> hours, like twenty hours of just yeah. like wow. smash work. You know, pretty cool. Yeah. And you guys are forming the shells and doing all that stuff yeah. Uh, yeah. in house. Yeah, that's the best part. I mean, that's the main question people ask, which I, I actually forgot to ask in the Orange County episode, and people told me in the comments of like, you didn't ask where the shells came yeah. from. Um, which, oh, let, where did let, the shells come let, from for let, let, let me let me nip that one in the butt if you don't mind uh oh, wow. yeah they're keller shells and i see online how much people bash keller shells yeah. i'm pro keller why listen 
you get you get a camco from la guess what it is you yeah. know what i mean it's going to be keller shells you, you get a get dope dw the, from the 90s the, the, the best dws yeah. are like early 90 pre-90 are are keller shells i don't get just because any any kid can buy it from a website and get a wrap and put it around it doesn't mean you can make a good drum no no it's like being upset right? we didn't smelt our own copper yeah <laughs> It's like, yeah. you tell me don't stuce your own smell. They're the best I mean, at making uh, shells. Let them do what they do best. They've yeah. been doing it for so long. You yeah. know? Um, no, that's come up a lot on the show, and Keller's awesome. And I think it's, it's with, custom to each brand, usually, too. With, with Q, we don't use Keller anymore after Max left. Um, I use an, <laughs> I took I use Keller with company. me. He, t- he took him with <laughs> me. Um, we, we actually use Nordic. Uh, okay. I don't know if you're familiar with Nordic shells. I, I've but, heard of them. I need to do a history on Nordic because, I mean, that's, wow. that's pretty cool. All I can say, it, but the thing is, I was looking for something more. When we were, with, when we were using Keller with Q, we could get 10-ply shells. And that's what we would use as our reinforcement rings in our metal shells. With Nordic, I can use 12-ply, and each ply is thicker, and there's no, uh, there's no cavities where the veneer doesn't meet up properly. So it's solid, uh, but because it's twelve ply, it's more reminiscent of a six six ring. Six six meaning if you're using a maple shell, this was the Camco, this was the DW, this was the Orange County with re rings. This is a six ply maple shell with a six ply reinforcement ring, and that is hands down the best maple shell I've ever heard or ever played or ever built, messed with, whatever. I wanted to mimic that edge, that 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 profile on our metal drums. So now that's why I go with Nordic. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. And you know, I, I think what you guys have done has clearly worked. Looking at the artist roster is insane. And right off the bat, we should say that Ilan Rubin, who is your partner, right? I mean, he yeah. described that relationship a little bit because Dear God, he is a monster drummer. I mean, he's yeah, incredible. Monster musician. Musician, not, you're right. He's not you're bad, right. is he? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, no. So Alon was an OC artist. Uh, I met him when he was 11, had braces, short curly hair. I mean, a twig. And he was just, <laughs> he was such a polite, cool kid. Still, I mean, still is. And, uh, you know, we Max and I both built him a bunch of drums at Orange County Drum. Um, I was still with Orange County when he came on board with Nine Inch Nails. And that kind of solidified our relationship because I helped him get into the fold with Nine Inch Nails. And ever since, he's just taken it and ran with it. Um, and he was an OCDP artist. Um, we built him a galvanized steel. He's another OCD o- OC artist that did uh, yeah. that a galvanized. That's right. Uh, but we built that. We built that for him post Q, where Matt and Frank Zumo they got theirs pre Q. That makes sense. So uh, Q was already going. Uh, he wanted he wanted a galvanized steel kit for the drum off. When they would do the drum off finales, they would have. Um, artists come up and and like do a, a clinic or play or whatever and he was he was on that night it was him it was aaron spears it was a couple of the people i can't remember and i built him the galvanized kit that had ocdp logos it sounded phenomenal um and after that you know we were going into 2013 i think with nine inch nails and he's like why am i playing ocdp i can't even get a kit i'm just gonna you know i want to play yeah I'll, good I'll, point I'll play what you, I'll play Q, but I want, I don't want to just be an artist. I want to be more than that. I'm like, okay, well, I could definitely use some funds and definitely use some help to get this off, off the ground. And he jumped right in. So that, that was that. Awesome. Seems like a very cool guy. Obviously, just everything you see on top yeah. of being just a musical kind of prodigy. Oh, yeah. um, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But beyond that, there's like Dom Howard, Tucker Rule. I'm looking at your artist list, uh, Chris yeah, Hornbrook, yeah. Um, Zach Lind. I mean, there's just, I don't want to skip anyone. There's just so many. Everyone is like Hayden Scott from Ghost. Everyone is like a top tier um, player. Obviously, 
Joe Schmo can just call and get a kit made as all well. Long. I mean, all day you, long. Yeah. you don't have to be in a huge band, but the fact that all these like kind of like very cool and like in guys yeah. and girls, if, if that makes sense, play yep. it just speaks a lot to the brand. Um, I feel like you've created there's similar. I mean, it's it's not really surprising, but similar to Orange County, there's just sort of a similar feel, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, we try Obviously, to bring that. You guys, we, yeah, well, yeah. We try to bring. We try to bring that same vibe over. Where, like I said, artists would call us directly, be like, "Hey, this is what I think I want to get," and we would, yeah, we would coach them through what what was possible, what would work best for their tour, what would blah 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 blah, and we became friends mm. through all of that, and that yeah. to me is most important. But I don't wear a suit. Max doesn't wear a suit. I'm not. I'm not sitting here thinking like. How many IG posts are you going to post about my drum kit this week? Don't yeah. post about it. Are you my friend? Awesome. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. I mean, that literally. How how good of a person are you? Um, that is supersedes everything. I don't care if you're the greatest drummer or the worst drummer. If you're if you're a good dude and you want to or or, or or chick and you want to play and you want to play our drums, let's do it. Yeah, I think let's that's al- yeah. that's always been the secret sauce. Is like. We, I mean, we, we yeah. always say this about Q, like, tongue-in-cheek, but it was like, dude, it's like our roster is like our family, like, in that sense, where it was like, yeah. everyone's like a friend, like, genuinely, and like, if, if if anything carried over from Orange County, it was similar. It was like, a bunch of kids who, like, love these things, and who love making these things, love making these things for people who love to play these things. It's like, it's fantastic, a perfect yeah. relationship, you know? And you're cool? Yeah. Dude, let's go... Yeah, let, let's go to the brewery and grab some food and grab a beer and hang out. And, oh, yeah. that, and that was a big th- that's a big thing too, man, about Q. It was like, it was very much about the hang. It, 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 more ever than it was about like adding your name to an impressive list so that we could yeah. like boast totally. about it. It was like, legitimately, dude. It was like about like, dude, we just want to hang out. And if you're cool, it was like, dude, we want to hang out more. Like, you know? So it was always yeah. great to have somebody come around or be in town or stop by that's the secret like for sure like the people you work with yeah a hundred percent hundred percent and you you know what the cool thing is about it too is like the the uh where the line blurs is like within within touring world i'd be on tour and we would have all these amazing opening acts for whatever band i was working for and they would always be they would have heard of q or whatever or they'd just be intrigued by the drums, the drummer, and then all of a sudden we would always get to talking and one thing would lead to another and it's like, I want to try out a kit. I mean, okay, cool, yeah. let's try try something out. And, yeah. and they would always be like, man, I've never played anything like this before. Yeah. You know, and I don't think it's necessarily the build quality. I think, again, a lot of it has to do with how you sell the image of what the company is and the company for us is we just we're, we're family oriented we love each other we hang out we want that to be part of it and i think when people come on board they're like this is rad yeah and i and i, yeah. and I think with that too it was always like it was always the, almost like they had to ask first in a way Meaning like, it wasn't like, oh, hey, like you meet somebody and then immediately like, let me give you, I built drums. Like you want, let me, let me build you some drums. Yeah. Let me, you need to play my drums. No, it was always like, they had to come ask. They had like that threshold, unless you were like good friends sure. with them. And that threshold was always like, you have to ask me in the sense that like, I don't want to encroach what I do on you. Like it has to be natural yeah. in that way. Yeah. You know, that's, like, that's, I'm not, that's what it is. Yeah. We're not pushers, dude. Like, and, no. and, and we're, obviously we're not like pushers and we're not poachers. Yeah. Yeah. Like Jeremy, obviously like to- really? tours way more, does way more sessions than I would ever do. But like every once in a while I would get when the like ninth guy on the list wasn't available, they would call Max and I was like, yeah, sure. I'll do it. Whatever. So I would like work these gigs and stuff. And like, and, uh, it was always kind of the same thing. Like I would never mention that, like, like, Oh bro, I work at Q. Like I never mentioned it. Cause it was just like, it wasn't who I was. It wasn't who the company was. And then somebody would find out and they'd be like, dude, why do you like that? 
That's all. Why did you say something? I, I could have borrowed some. Drugs. I think it's cooler that way. I agree. It's cooler when people find out. I don't even bring up. I mean, the podcast is nothing compared to what you guys are doing, but I don't bring it up to people I meet, like you know, in my neighborhood or something. You should, and when yeah. they find out about it later, but when they yeah. find out about it later, it's cooler, and they go, "Dude, what the f- you you do this?" It's like, yeah, yeah. dude, your uh, voice is that different. sexy. Yeah, it is. <laughs> nice yes, to meet me. Is. I know one hundred percent. Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I think this is leading right up to a good point to talk about um, the community that you guys have built. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we could talk all day. I mean, we're like an hour and a half deep right now. Uh, and I feel like, Jeremy, at some point, even another one where we could talk about your like drum teching and that oh, world dude. of just like tips and tricks for that. But I mean, for the sake of time, I think we should just so we, we get to it. The community obviously has come together in a big part oh, you right want now. Me, you want you want me to cry, man? I thought this we were is friends. the hard part. <laughs> okay, we did talk about this before. I think that uh, people people would love to hear from you about what's been going on um, oh, and just like you know the amazing outpouring of support that's been going on. Maybe if you're comfortable with it, you just want to kind of tell people what's been going on in case they're not familiar with the situation. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, it's heavy. Um, I was on tour in Europe. I was having some. I was feeling some sort of way and I needed to go see a doctor and uh, I ended up in in a doctor's office in Athens and it was a, ga- a gastroenterologist and she did an endoscopy and she found a tumor in my stomach. She said, I had a week left to tour. She said, uh, you need to go home immediately and get your affairs in order. Um, that's what I did. I flew home and... Uh, you know, when she called me the following week when I was at home to tell me the results of the biopsy, it came back cancerous. She said it was second, third stage cancer. And I'm like, okay. She's like, it's beatable, but you got to get on it now. So I found a team down here, that, down in San Diego. And uh, I went there. They did all the same tests, all that stuff. And um, I ended up doing a PET scan, which is a little more... It shows a little bit more and come to find out the cancers in my bones and my lymph nodes. It's now stage four. It's a high stage four. And it was, uh, yeah, I mean, that's heavy, man. Heavy. No one should have to go through that. No, it's heavy, man. And to come on that fast, mm-hmm. you know, like there's yeah. no lead up to being sick like that, but no, no, and, uh, you know, I, I hadn't worked for two and a half years because of the pandemic, really. And uh, I, I, just so everybody knows, I don't make money from Q. Q is just a passion project. Uh, I, make my, I make my money from touring. There was no touring. I'd finally gotten on a tour. I finally was able to get some work, get some money. And then this, which canceled the rest of my, I had two years slated on this tour. And um, I can't do it. And so, you know, I started to stress a bit. Um, Roger, Roger Coe, who's part of Q as well, um, hit me up. He's like, I want to do a GoFundMe. And I, man, I just don't feel comfortable with that shit. I, I just don't. And, uh, and I talked to my doctors. They told me what it was going to cost. And I was like, okay, we're, we're done. So I reached out to Roger and I said, okay, I guess, I guess run it. And he did. And he's like, I'm gonna put it at 250,000. I'm like, dude, why? You know what I mean? And when it hit and it started reaching, I mean, when it got over 70,000, I, I, I was shocked. And the people, seeing the people that were donating, you know, like people that I've worked for that heard through the grapevine, putting tons of money down, um, all the drummer friends that I know that were reposting. I mean, I cried literally three, four hours a day for weeks. And uh, yeah, it actually helped me heal a bit. It helped because it gave me this reason to fight, number one, but it also gave me the means to not have to stress. Um, I still have tons of medical bills. My medical bills are up over 200 grand. I do have medical insurance. Thank God. I have good news. I had, I had uh, a second PET scan after my first six rounds of chemotherapy and immunotherapy. 
My scans show that it has lessened a lot. It's still there. Uh, the doctors believe that I will be living, living with this for the rest of my life. The way the way the, the way they liken it is it's like grass or weeds. You can you can pull the weeds from from their root even, but it's going to come back at some point. So the key is maintenance is basically to get it as minimal as possible. Um, I'm sick. I, I mean, I throw up. Excuse me. I'm nauseous. I throw up every day. I've lost sixty pounds. I'm, I'm really weak. I don't have the energy to stand or work in the shop at the moment. I thought that this month I'd be able to, but it just hasn't materialized yet. And you know, I think I, I think the cancer is mo- least of my worries at this time. It's more the side effects from all the stuff that they've given me to fight the cancer. But I'll say, like, I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for the community. I, I'd already be. I, I would have already checked. Um, the community, my lady, my child, my friends that keep tabs on me every day, you know, and um, man, it's it's uh, it's a lot. And I'm I'm sorry, I, I've, I've gone on a tangent, but oh um, no, my God, I, I, I honestly I can't I can't thank everybody enough. There's <laughs> Roger, my friend Eric Lederman, Tucker. Geo, they formed like this little task force. They call it the Berman Task Force, I guess. <laughs> and they they put together this this auction that came out. The auction, so the auction that just happened was supposed to coincide with the with the jump of GoFundMe. Because to be honest, I didn't think anybody was gonna donate, you know. And uh, they were they were worried about it too. So they had they had hit up all these people and got all this amazing gear and they finally had procured enough of it to put the auction in, but the GoFundMe crushed. I mean, it was, yeah. it was insane Big time. Yeah. And you know, like, you know, I've tried to pay it forward. I know there's been some people in our industry that have been, um, they've been affected the same way. Jonathan Cowell of revolution drum. Um, you know, I, I wanted to donate to him. He's, he's amazing. He texts me, you know, at least once or twice a week just to check up on me because he's been he's been through it before and he's going through it again. And Jeez. he's got, he, you know, it's different than what I have, but it's still the same constipation, nauseous, losing weight, can't sleep because of the pain. All these things that, you know, uh, I, I guess only people that are dealing with cancer can really truly understand. So it's been, it's been nice to have someone to talk to um i also i have another dear friend that also went through it I, I won't mention his name because i don't think he's made it public but he's a big influence in the drum industry and he's let me know like hey dude you got a kid fight for that you have to fight yeah um it's been uh it's been <clears throat> eye-opening what makes me what makes me really sad is that i've Q was gaining so much momentum and now it's just it's just it's a storage unit currently I go down there once every other week to check mail stare at the shop and dream big you know what I mean Um, I built a snare drum recently and it was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do and uh, wow but I did it and the person that got it is amazing and she deserved it. And, you know, it's just, it's just a lot, man. It's just a lot. I, and, you know, when, yeah. I, when I, when I talk to my friends, you know, like, like every time I talk to him, Max and I don't talk all that often right now because when we do talk, it's emotional. Oh, we and can't. It's, it's just, it's just so hard for me. Like just. Yeah. I feel you, man. I mean, man. you know, you, you heard it's, him earlier. You heard yeah. him earlier. And it just, it, it hits me right here. And I, it's, it's, just, it's just hard, man. No one should have to go through this. And you and I literally just met tonight for the first time. And the fact that I feel a huge connection to you already. And I don't, I know it doesn't, what is it worth? But I am truly sorry. And I think everyone is that you have to go through this. And no one yeah. 
should have to go through this, but it doesn't pick good people or bad people. I mean, you're like an incredible guy and it's just, there's no, it's just, uh, it's uh, awful, but I, would, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. My my poor parents, they, they both called me today and they're just like, Jer, I wish I was the one going through this. I'm like, no, you don't, you don't. And I, and I wouldn't want you to go through it because I'm, I'm stronger than you guys are. You guys are in your seventies. It, this is not, this is not for you. I, I, I will yeah. get through this. I will get through it again. Like just the amount of love that it showed is yeah. I was gonna say. truly is truly lifted me more than anything that I could have ever imagined. I'm getting text messages from friends that I haven't talked to in forever. And it's, it's just, uh, yeah, I've, I've never seen anything like it. The amount of people and just, no, especially in this community, in this community. Yeah. But, but I mean, if that's, I mean, dude, if that's not a testament to the person in itself, then I don't know what is. It's like something like this happens. And then like, in let's be real in somewhat of like a fickle, selfish industry. You have this turnaround of just wanting to help that in its own right, the sickness is like this emotional thing that I can only imagine. You have to like emotionally balance and then you have all of this, this like, and I know like we we're like this, like anytime anybody does anything for us, it's super hard. So I can imagine like how, how hard it is to like, dude, the outreach and the import of love is like unbelievable. It's such a beautiful thing that, and like oh, the man, scale of it, man. So my point is, is like, if it's any testament to the person itself, you know, it's oh, incredible. Man, I, love totally. you, you know that, I love you too, man. It's incredible. You know, and I mean, I mean that, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, the fact that you came on the show and we're like, we wanted, I mean, we emailed a while back and just coming on to share your story. I knew we had to save this stuff to the end because otherwise then it would be like, so tell me about Orange County. Right. <laughs> it would be like not the right order to go. Well, but I, I, will, mean, I will say without Orange County, there wouldn't be us, man. Exactly. And, and but that, me, we had to, to have me, fun first. Yeah, you know. of course. Of course. Um, I will say something that's pretty funny. I remember... When I finally got the nerve to tell Daniel that I started Q, <laughs> I, I needed the nerve. I mean, you don't un- you don't <laughs> understand Daniel. Uh, it could have gone one of two ways, and it would have gone badly one way, and 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 I didn't want that because I love Daniel to death, and I love his family, I love Kirsten, and I didn't want to um, make waves, but I also wanted to build drums. Like, you know, fuck, man, that's what I've done. That's all I know. I'm not a college graduate. I'm not even a high school graduate. Like, you know, I tested out of high school early and all I've ever done is worked. And I love tinkering on stuff. I started off in bicycles and I've moved on into drums. And it was, uh, there's, uh, there's very much a, a, a tie in with both of those to me that are very important. Me, Max, and Sean Barber would go ride. I mean, it was like the best thing. We would, we would build drums. Sean would come from the tattoo shop with his bike. We'd go ride. We would laugh at Sean crash, and we would just love <laughs> We would love it. Every minute of it. It yeah. was just the most fun, and it would give us just a release from the shop. Even if Max and I had a bad day with each other, we'd get on the bikes, we'd ride, and then we would laugh, mm. and, it, and everything went away, you know? But anyway... I wanted to continue building drums, so I had to tell Daniel. And Daniel's like, Daniel's like, well, I wish you good luck. It's a stupid idea because you're <laughs> never going to make any money. And he was absolutely 100% correct. But at mm. the end of the day, it's never been about the money for us. It's always just been about making awesome stuff and having people love it like it was their child. You know? Yeah. And to me, that... There's nothing that beats that. And with that, I think that that sort of spread into the community. And I have imposter syndrome right now, and it's weird. But um, the love has been unreal. And I really just want to get back to making Q again and having people be stoked on what we pump out. So, Yeah, for sure. It will absolutely happen. And I think uh, 
like you said, the community is just unbelievable. And uh, this wouldn't have happened to someone who was not cool along the way and had burned bridges. And even the fact of what you said about Daniel and going to him and asking, it's just like all these little things speak to your character of just how the business was handled. And even with you, Max, too, as well, you guys, it's just talking about how, you know, we might have had a bad day, but then you go and do, you know, go ride together and do this stuff. It's just like, it's the community. It's the drum drumming community in general is all very, um, it's, it's, it's very cool and family oriented. I think. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. We're friends. We're friends with just about every drum company out there. I mean, there might be a few that we're not the best of friends with, but I've always thought that you can learn something from somebody, you know what I mean? And I'm not one to sit there and, oh, well, I shouldn't say I'm not one to bash somebody's drums. I have, I'm, I'm not, you know, <laughs> you're human. We, we, we all, we all do it. Um, yeah. but, but the community itself is just, is incredible. I mean, there's, there's nothing like it, man. And I, I couldn't be happier to be a part, even just a small part of it. You know? Absolutely. Well, clearly you're a huge part of it. I mean, with the, that auction, is just insane yeah, the is amount of stuff that was unreal. Uh, <laughs> unreal. I, I'm yeah. sad. I'm, I'm sad. No one picked the Fred Armisen come to your house and do a stand up. I saw that. Oh I God, just I, when Fred wait when Fred posted when, or when Eric texted me to tell me that Fred. I actually were, I worked for, I worked for Fred for for a couple shows. He was playing in Devo, and uh, he had asked me to come tech for him, and it was one of the funniest most fun (laughs) things i'd ever done he's he's exactly what you see on camera he's quirky and funny and just he's just sweet man and i when that happened i couldn't believe it i I just i could not believe it um all of it i mean all all of it i just yeah unreal 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 and thank you every single person that has ever donated to me for I just, I, hopefully I make you proud and I get through this and can start building drums again. That's all I care about. And my totally. friends and Yeah, and your friends and family. And friends no, and very family. well, very well said. I mean, I think it's just unbelievable. I'll put a link in the description. I mean, you're at $234,000 uh, and, and some change right now on the GoFundMe. So pretty unbelievable. I'll put it in the description for people who want to donate because um, like you said, stuff is expensive. So um, you can go find Q Drum online at QDrumCo.com. Um, but like social media and all that stuff, do you guys want to like kind of tell people where to find you or anything? Q Drum Co. <laughs> Q Drum Co. <laughs> Q Drum Co. I will. I, I do want to. I want to thank you very much, Bart. I know you reached out to me early on in June. Man, I really appreciate what you've done as far as especially the OCDP stuff. I think it definitely needs to be pushed out there. I I, I keep seeing drum builders that are that had built orange county drum stuff post orange county drum and it, you know it, it hurts my heart to see it because we were very much very prideful on us being the builders and, it, and when i see somebody saying well i built this okay what was the time frame was it was yeah. it post or pre and you know i yeah it, it, it drives me crazy because I, 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 what you're doing is allowing us to clear the air about a lot of things. Yeah. Um, and you know, I know we didn't we didn't dive very deep into OCDP. I know you had the other two podcasts, um, but the idea of a bunch of twenty year old idiots building ridiculous stuff, making it to the making it to the artists that we made it for. Uh, is insane. Yeah. And, I, yeah. and it's really cool to have something like on record that a, you know, it reminds you, yeah, that was cool. Like I was a part of that, but it's also super cool for me to hear it from somebody else's perspective that went through the yeah. same thing that in other words is somewhat impossible unless it's of a scale of what it is like orange County in that sense, you know, like, you, I, mean, I mean, you're not going to talk to For your sure. valet buddies about what valeting was like, but this is cool. This is like a moment in history that you're a part of, <laughs> that you're unawaringly, unknowingly a part of. And it's super cool that it's on record, man. Yeah. I appreciate that you're doing this, bro. Oh, I appreciate you guys saying that. There's something interesting about hearing other people. Like, I bet in a year we'll watch like a documentary about like COVID and we'll be like, oh, man, that was so, you know, it, it puts it in a different perspective yeah. Yeah. to like watch or hear someone else talk about yeah, it. But, yeah, yeah. Um, I appreciate that. 
that's very kind words from you guys. But um, on that note, thank you guys for watching uh, or, and listening, everyone out there. And Jeremy and Max, guys, thank you for being here. And uh, maybe down the road, we'll have you back and talk about something else. It was my pleasure, but, um, man. For now, thank you guys thank you. for being oh, here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you.